in this class let us begin with our discussion about sustainable growth rate in fact we have been talking about sustainable growth rate right from an early stage try to recollect when we learned two stages and three stages dividend discount model what did we learn under two stage dividend discount model that at the first phase or at the first stage there will be a super normal growth or extraordinary growth but for a finite period and after end of that finite period then begins a stable growth rate or a sustainable growth rate or normal growth rate for an infinite period. So because that normal growth rate or sustainable growth rate is for an infinite period we also call it as a perpetual growth rate as per gordon's model growth rate itself is a product of two factors right the return on equity and the retention ratio the same is with sustainable growth rate so sustainable growth rate is not technically something different it is a growth rate that a business can sustain without any other influences what it can sustain with the available resources what it can sustain with the available line of business and that is as simple as just any growth rate so keep in mind one thing when we are dealing with questions on sustainable growth rate you have to still follow the same fundamentals what you have learned earlier but technically speaking you should be clear about when we define this term sustainable growth rate. So let us write some notes first. The sustainable growth rate that is SGR is the maximum rate of growth that a company can sustain without having to finance such growth with additional equity or debt. In other words, it is a rate at which the company can grow while using its own internal revenue without borrowing from outside sources and as i said technically to compute sustainable growth rate or sgr it is simply the return on equity multiplied by retention ratio and you know what is retention ratio it is basically one minus dividend payout ratio so it is uh, return on equity multiplied by one minus dividend payout ratio so please write up this content and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this much let us move ahead and take up a question relating to this particular concept that will be question number 29 let us read this question following financial information is available of xp limited for the year 2018 equity share capital that is rupees 10 each total amount rupees 200 lakhs reserves and surplus rupees 600 lakhs 10 percent debentures 350 lakhs total assets 1200 lakhs assets turnover ratio two times tax rate 30 percent operating margin 10 percent dividend payout ratio 20 percent current market price per equity share is rupees 28 and required rate of return of investors is 18 percent further the question is asking prepare income statement for the year 2018 determine its sustainable growth rate Determine the fair price of the company's share using dividend discount model. Give your opinion on investment in the company's share at current price. So as such, this is straight and simple question. You have absolutely no complication over here. And let me help you how to solve this. Let us first make some workings beginning with assets turnover ratio, which is given as two times. So total assets is rupees 1200 lakhs. So because asset turnover ratio is two times, it is implied that the company's turnover will be twice the amount of its total assets and that would come to rupees 2400 lakhs. Interest on debentures will be 10% of 350 lakhs. That will be rupees 35 lakhs. Operating margin or operating profit, which is given as 10%. So operating cost will be obviously 90%. So whatever be the sales, 90% of that will be your operating cost that comes to 2160 lakhs. So operating profit or EBIT will be 10% of 2400 lakhs that is 240 lakhs. Dividend payout ratio is given as 20%. Tax rate is given as 30%.
so let us first write this basic information and then we move ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this much let us move ahead and continue writing further in the solution the income statement goes this way starting with sales subtract operating cost to get operating profit or ebit as 240 lakhs subtract interest and you get earnings before tax as 205 lakhs tax is at the rate of 30% that comes to 61.5 lakhs and uh, resulting into earnings after tax or profit after tax which is available for equity obvious reason is there are no preference shares so whatever profit after tax it is straight away available for equity shareholders equity dividend is at the rate of 20% so that will be 28.7 so it is basically 20% of the earnings because it is not a dividend rate it is the dividend payout keep in mind one thing huh? if it was a dividend rate informed in the question you would have applied 20% of the share capital amount here it is the dividend payout of 20% that is why it is dividend computed at 20% on the amount of earnings available to equity shareholders as a result the retention will be 80% of this earnings and that is what we call as retained earnings so please write up this entire working and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and take up the solution further the net worth is the share capital plus reserves which comes to rupees 800 lakhs return on equity is basically profit after tax divided by the net worth or net assets so that will be 143.5 lakhs divided by 800 lakhs and that comes to 17.94% to compute the sustainable growth rate or sgr it is simply the return on equity multiplied by 1 minus dividend payout ratio or simply return on equity multiplied by the retention ratio so because the dividend payout ratio is 20% retention ratio will be 80% so that gives you the sustainable growth rate as 14.35% now d0 that is the dividend per share at present will be the total amount of dividend divided by number of equity shares and that comes to rupees 1.435 this is the dividend that you have already paid for the year and that is why it is identified as d0 so please write up this entire calculation and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and deal with the later part of the solution fair price of the share using dividend discount model so basically the gordons model or dividend discount model is p0 equals to d1 divided by ke minus g you may define these variables d1 is the expected dividend so your current dividend was 1.435 and dividend growth rate is at 14.35% adding the growth rate to the current dividend gives you the expected dividend by end of the year equity capitalization rate is 18% and p0 is what we have to determine that is the fair price of the share and growth rate as we have already determined it is 14.35% substituting all these uh, values of variables in the p0 formula what we get p0 value will be 1.64 divided by 0.18 minus 0.1435 and that results into p0 being 44.93 that means the fair price of the share is rupees 44.93 now what is the quoted market price of the share just rupees 28 so the fair value of the share is rupees 44.93 and it is being traded at just rupees 28 so it is clear that the share is underpriced and the investor should invest in this share so please write up this entire solution and then i take you ahead All right friends once you have completed writing this entire solution let us move ahead and now talk about price earning ratio so we are talking about share valuation where the type of valuation will be pe multiplier based valuation now what is price earnings ratio you have learnt it at intermediate level itself it is the ratio of market price per share and earnings per share 
you have to be little careful about this particular ratio because sometimes this ratio may be the comparison of current market price per share with the current earnings per share or sometimes the same ratio could be reflected little differently that is uh, the current market price per share may be related with the expected earnings per share as well. Let me give you this point clear by an example. Assume that a particular share in the market it is currently quoted at rupees 400 and it is expected that the company has potential of earning uh, maybe rupees 50 per share. So if I pick my calculator investing 400 now you have expectation that the earnings per share would be rupees 50. So 50 divided by 400 if I take the percentage I get 12.5 percent as your expected rate of earnings. So expected rate of earnings what you can call even as K because that will be earnings based expected rate of return by the shareholder. So 12.5 percent is the expected rate of return. So because you are investing 400 now and expecting to have EPS of rupees 50 if you compare the current market price with the expected earnings per share it is 400 divided by 50 that is market price per share divided by earnings per share that would give you what 8 times correct. Now what happens price earning ratio is considered to be inverse of the expected rate of return on earnings basis for example in this case the price earning ratio in my example is coming as 8 times if I take inverse of 8 1 divided by 8 what I get is 0 0.125 which reflects 12.5 percent as the rate of return which is expected by shareholder. So the price earning ratio and KE can be considered to be inverse of each other. Now look at one thing in this current example I just explained you that by investing rupees 400 now you are expecting to have EPS of rupees 50. Sometimes questions may give you scenario little differently. They may say that uh, the current market price per share is 400 and current EPS is rupees 50. So still the price earning ratio remains 8 times and the return on equity or the expected rate of return on equity remains 12 and a half percent. But whenever you are having involvement of any growth rate in the scenario that time it will be of crucial importance that which year's price is connected with which year's earnings keep that thing in mind because there is no static type of situations that you will be facing both scenarios are possible so price earning ratio has that same meaning whether you are connecting the market price per share of today with uh, expected earnings per share that you will get after one year or today's market price is compared with today's earnings per share itself. So be prepared what is given in the question and the language of the question carries a lot of importance. So let me explain this a little better through an example as in how do we use PE multiplier based valuation. Concept of price earning ratio this is the ratio of market price per share with earnings per share. So PE ratio is simply MPPS divided by EPS. For example A limited has reported EPS of rupees 40 its current market price per share or MPPS is rupees 320 its price earning ratio will be 320 divided by 40 and that comes to 8 times. Now guys look at one thing in this scenario in this scenario the current market price is 320 and it is the current EPS which is 40. In the example that I narrated some time back I was connecting the current market price per share with the expected earnings per share but in this example it is given little different it is market price per share at present compared with the earnings per share at present. I told you both possibilities exist. 
So what do we conclude from this? This ratio indicates that the MPPS, that is market price per share, is 8 times of EPS. Now this becomes the PE multiplier. Now what will be the role of PE multiplier? I'll explain in a while. First you write up this note quickly. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and see the role of price earning multiplier, that is PE multiplier. Suppose in the next year the company reports EPS of rupees 50. How will you estimate its MPPS, that is market price per share? So expected market price per share will be EPS multiplied by PE multiplier. So that will be rupees 50 into 8 times that comes to rupees 400. Now the above computed expected MPPS indicates the fair value of the share that the investor should expect. If the actual quoted market price is rupees 380, then it is considered that the share is underpriced and in such situations you would advise to buy the share. In such situation, the investor would prefer buying this share in the stock market because the actual price is less than the fair value. Inversely, if the actual quoted market price is rupees 420, then it is considered that the share is overpriced and the investors will prefer selling this share. So please write up this much and then I take you ahead.